All right, and we are trying this again. Sorry about the crashes and the late start. Hopefully, this time, we'll actually be able to run through this. Hmm? Oh, the second story DLC, Through the Ashes, is available now. Play as a humble citizen of Canabras, work together with new allies, and survive in the demon-infested city. Alright, well, that certainly is something to look forward to. Hmm. All right. Here's hoping it works out this time. It doesn't look like the game's going to crash again. Computer seems to be working fine. All right. Sure. <laughs> All right. That's fine. We made it. Loot. We went through, we defeated uh, Karamzada. That's about everything else. Now it's just the world wound. Talk to Terendalev. The corruption inside me is trying to break free because of the proximity to the world wound. But my will is stronger. Talk this here. Today, light will prevail. There's no other way. All right. Talk to Hillor. With his head thrown back, Venture Captain Hillor grimly looks at the Threshold Fortress. So all that stuff that has tormented our Avistan for a century sprawled out of this dump? Raise this place down to the very foundation, Commander. Why did you come? As a man of honor, I could not stay away. I've been at war with demons my whole life. And if there's anything I can do for you in the last battle, I'm ready to risk my head. What can you do for our army? You may want to strengthen your unit with a couple of experienced mercenaries for the coming assault. Either that, or you will need to train your comrades in new combat tactics. I can help you with both. It's good that you are here. If in the upcoming battle you need a pair of sleek fighters, let me know. Some of my comrades are real ruffians. I have to go. Good luck. Watch your back. Only trust your closest friends. The enemy is cunning and treacherous. Nevia and Erebeth. Commander, you promised us victory when it seemed impossible, and you did not let us down. Doing the impossible is your specialty. You have led us here, to the very gates of the enemy's lair. 
Now we will end this century long nightmare once and for all. Arabeth's gaze burning with intensity surveys the walls of the demon citadel. You're so good at toppling fortresses by now, you can almost keep time by it. <laughs> the great garrison, Dresden, and now Threshold. So are we coming up on noon or midnight on the commander clock? Doesn't matter. The bards can settle that one. It's the hour of your triumph. So much time has passed since we first met. Do you remember our first meeting? Of course. It was a long time ago now, but it's not the kind of thing you forget. I was almost buried alive. If it wasn't for you and Sila, my skull would be lying in some cave right now with only rats for company. It was unforgettable. That attack on the Grey Garrison was the last desperate push. The last hope of holding the city when it seemed only a miracle could save us. We would have died there. But you and Anevia left out of the ground, and then miracles began to happen. How would you rate our chances of winning? We have a chance. And that's a far sight better than how things stood not so long ago. Of course, it's too early to celebrate. We've still got a battle to fight, the likes of which we've never seen before. But I think you can pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> With you leading us. Those monsters should be worrying about their chances of escaping with their lives. Arabeth bears her sharp teeth <laughs> in a wide, fierce grin. Right. What are you going to do after we win? Personally, I'm going to be doing a big pile of nothing. For a month. Or maybe two. <laughs> Arabeth, too. Wheedling, blackmail, violence. I'll stop at nothing to drag her away on her first ever vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, I can see surrender is my only option. <laughs> hey. All right, it's time to finish this. We've waited so long for this. Onward to victory. Lead on, Commander. Hmm. Yeah, if you talk to them again, they just say the same thing, more or less. Alright. Miamir. All this time the spirits of dead Sarkoris have waited in such anticipation for this day. For their vengeance. And we will see it done. Arsno. Arsno cast a disapproving glance at the fortress. The demons have completely neglected the fortifications here. They are in complete disarray. However, this place right into our hands. What are you doing here? I fulfill my duty to Ab Abadar, of course. I am not afraid of chaos, so I go into a world of savagery and grief to bring the light of civilization, law, and order. Can you help me with something before the attack? As before, I can help you cast the necessary spells, and if you wish to recuperate, I will make sure that your rest is not disturbed. I'm glad you are with us. May Abadar keep you, Commander. I see that you have brought the altar of Abadar here to the threshold. The Crusader army need, needs protection from the corruption of the Abyss, as do you, Commander. I am deeply flattered that the privilege of granting such protection has been given to me and my god. I need to catch my breath. Rest, Commander. A hard battle lies ahead. Oh, I can actually take a long rest. Sleep. But later. Let's talk to everybody here. Nope. Got a few people down here. Robust, corrupted mongrel. Not enough demons. Want more. They scream funny when I pull gu guts out. I like. <laughs> Chief Soul. Woo. Hopping from one rock to another is exhausting. We'll make our stand here. Uh, 
Not in there. All right, Nistra. This is a fine position. As soon as they show their faces, we'll incinerate them. All right. Queen Galfrey. The queen greets you with one direct look. To be honest, I almost stopped believing that I would live to see this moment. It has been at least 50 years since I stopped hoping and believing it could happen. And yet, here we are, at the entrance to Threshold. All thanks to you. She brings a hand to her face for a moment in a gesture that looks slightly awkward. She looks away for a few moments. When she raises her eyes to you again, they are filled with a mixture of anxiety and hope. Do you want to join my party? After all the things I have said, I cannot just let you go into the final battle all alone. And you'll leave Mendev just like that. I care deeply about my country, but my time has passed. I am a symbol of war, not a symbol of peace. And I venture that I deserve to live the rest of my long, long life the way I want. If of course, you want the same. Hmm. Oh, hello, Atreus. <sighs> and still, I cannot help but hope that it is not Daeron Arendae who becomes my successor. <laughs> hmm? Not really. All right, let's see. I have a request. When we win, the wardstones will no longer be needed. Whatever happens to me, free the angels imprisoned inside them. You are right. I shall fulfill your request, although it will be difficult. No one in Mendev knows the sacrifice that the creation of the wardstones demanded. The stones themselves are seen as a symbol of hope and safety. To destroy them would be akin to dismantling the fortress walls around Mendev's cities. It will provoke suspicion and panic, even if the demons are defeated by that time. But the angels have done their duty and should be freed. Therefore, should we win, I shall carry out your request, even if it means losing the people's trust. So I haven't played yet, I'm actually considering a different approach to tackling the game. I thought you were going for the hunter build to try to see it with an archery character. Then you changed your mind? Alright, uh... Yeah, I looked at the Hunter spells and didn't like them. <laughs> well, if you didn't like the Ranger, chances are, yeah. Alright. I love you, Goffrey. Join me in this final battle and after. Be with me always and forever. A maelstrom of emotion sweeps over Goffrey's face. She pales, then blushes bites her lip, then takes a resolute step forward and kisses you. 
eagerly, almost greedily, as if trying to make up for all those years of sustaining herself on duty alone. When she pulls back from you, you see tears glittering in her eyes. She presses her whole body against you and then steps back. Hmm. Uh huh. What? No ranger spells make sense. They're not the best, but they make sense. Hunter gets two levels too many. What? Alright. So then, what's the plan now? May Omade be with you or any other power you that you believe in. Right. Talk to the storyteller. The old elf stands frozen. It is unclear whether he is listening closely to the sounds coming from the fortress, contemplating something, or just dozing. Upon hearing your footsteps, he respectfully ducks his head. Commander. How did you end up right in the thick of battle? Hmm? Uh-huh. I'm thinking of a swordsman build, but still hesitating on either sword lord or duelist. Wait, why not both? You can go Aldori... What, what is it? It's not called the Aldori sword lord. Aldori something. Aldori defender into duelist. Since both of them use dueling swords, anyway. Oh wait, I guess there's a lot of overlap, so you don't want to do that. You could go fighter, or maybe sword saint into duelist. Since the sword saint Magus has to been has to have only one wep a weapon in one hand, just like the duelist. You can get all the benefits of the duelist class and the and a, and a magus all at once. At least and that's if, a. And if you want, yeah. Yeah, nah, I think that's a little. Too, well, no. In this game, I guess if you pick the right multi the right mythic path, you can go Aldori Defender into du into Sword Saint, into Duelist, into Eldritch Knight. <laughs> but that's a bit... That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Legendary. Jeez. And then you have all the cool mm. aspects of it. Because Aldori Defender works better into Sword Lord. Hmm. Alright. I thought Aldori Defender still worked into, into Duelist as well. But if you don't want to do that... Could just go Fighter into uh, Duelist. But I like the idea of Sword Saint going into Duelist as well. Alright. Ultimately, the decision's up to you. Alright. How did you end up right in the thick of battle? The storyteller smiles softly. This is not my first battle, Commander. I know how to defend myself. And the thunder of a fight has never stopped me from getting into another adventure. I have come to witness great things, and some unsightly demons will not dare to get in my way. Hmm? A lot of people go from Sword Saint to Duelist. It's a pretty solid build. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I don't think my ideas will be original, considering they may, if they, especially if they make sense. What else can go into Duelist? I guess you could have any martial class go into duelist. Uh, ranger, hunter, slayer. Um, what else? Swashbuckler, rogue, I think. <laughs> I 
What else? Man, the list goes on. I guess you could always just go fight, like, plane fighter. There's armager. Rogue goes well into duelist, but it's tedious. <laughs> How is it tedious? Well, if it is tedious, then it is. What about Slayer, then? Alright, how will you help- Alright, will you help us in battle? A blind man is hardly what you will need when storming a fortress. I will stay here, among the soldiers guarding the gates against uninvited guests. If you manage to seize any artifacts whose nature you wish to know, bring them to me and I'll read their stories. What do you think lies ahead for me? My gift is useless here. This story has yet to be written. And the quill is in your hands, Commander. I appreciate your coming here, right to the heart of the fight. How could I miss a story like this? I wish to witness it, not listen to the retelling in years to come. I found a page that might interest you. The storyteller carefully takes your find. Yes, you're right. Another piece of evidence from, my, from the past I have forgotten. The old elf's expression becomes withdrawn. The storyteller clenches the pages you brought. His voice becomes a bit younger and more energetic. I'm sitting at the top of my tower. In my right hand is a goblet of warmed wine. In my left, a bark-covered notebook. I breathe in the ash floating in the air. The wine leaves the bitter taste of soot soot on my lips. It's been about a hundred years since I returned to Galarian from the abyss. A hundred years spent on research, hard work, and rare journeys. I turn the page of the notebook. The wisdom of elves and the cunning of demon lord Baphomet are gathered here. There is the description of how the purple crystal from Elucianera works on and my own observations about Rift Carver, Demon Lord Descari's scythe. I know everything written in it by heart, but I keep paging through it all the same. Touching these pages makes me hopeful and strengthens my resolve. I have gathered everything I need to collect, connect Galarian with another plane. I'm close to saving the smoldering embers of Galarian, hiding them from Earthfall. Just a little bit more, a decade or a hundred years, and everything will be ready for the ritual. A cold shiver runs down my spine, and I smile. Kaini is trying to get into my tower again. A world of ruins presents many opportunities for a thief. Forgotten ancient treasures left by their owners are there for the taking. These objects are not so precious nowadays, but they can fetch a good price on other planes. However, my friend stubbornly continues to try and evade the protective traps of my tower. Hmm? Why well, could make an ordinary tiefling eldritch archer? Sure. I don't know what Eldritch Archer does, though. Like, specifically. Alright, moving on. He got caught. Predictable. The tree guards safely entangled Kiny in their branches. You got to the third floor of the tower today. Nice try. I smile, sip my wine, and turn the page of the notebook. My friend will have to wait a little while before he's released. I'll finish my wine first. Hmm? Specifically, it's rays turned into arrows. So, do you, so basically you get the benefits of attacking with a bow and arrow, but it still attacks the touch AC? Am I hearing this right? 
So you can apply like uh, weapon focus and such to the attacks. That I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, so there has to be some reason to use Eldritch Archer as opposed to just blasting spells the, norm the old fashioned way. So there's got to be some kind of benefit. All right, tell me about Galarian after Earthfall. The storyteller gulps. It's frightening here. Many people have perished. Cities have turned to ruin. The few who are still holding on, on fall deeper into degradation with each passing day, turning into barbarians or bandits. Not a week goes by without notice, without someone trying to attack my tower and drop me. Hmm. I think it still goes for touch AC with the added benefit of arrow damage. Okay. Now if it goes for arrow damage, then perhaps it's going for, you know, weapon focus benefits as well. If nothing else, you know, you can you can grab a plus five uh you could grab a plus five bow and arrow and apply that to your ray attacks now. So that works. Okay. But my spells are strong and my guards are impeccable. Hungry and crippled, the riffraff leave my tower in search of easier pickings. I watch them go and feel no mercy. They deserve their fate. They should have fought like me. But they chose the easy path of plunder. Why does Kaini try to get into your tower? The storyteller shrugs and frowns. All this started with an innocent joke when I boasted to him that my tower was now the safest place on Galarian. And he decided to prove me wrong. It's been 20 years now, or since then. And it's become a very long-running joke. Once every few years, Kaini tries to get into my tower secretly and steal something from me. My precious book of research notes, or the heart of the tower, the purple crystal we got in Illusionera. I play along, truly happy every time my friend comes to visit. But deep down, I start to worry. Please continue. Kani takes the goblet from my hands, but is not in a rush to drink it. You would learn so much if you didn't sit here guarding your secrets, he says to me. I smile. Not every secret must belong to the world, my friend. Precious stones lose their shine when they pass through a hundred hands. In the same way, knowledge is distorted and truth turns into tall tales. This is why I sit in my tower guarding what I have created and what I have obtained from others. My friend only shrugs and stops talking, dissatisfied with my answer. I start to think, when did Kanye and I drift apart? He blames me for dragging my feet. He says I should have opened a rift to the other planes as soon as I returned to Galarian, and now it's too late. The jewels of our civilization have already perished, and soon the rest will too. He thinks we've lost, and now my research is simply dangerous. I don't answer his reproaches, for they are somewhat fair. I could have tried to save Galarian a hundred years ago when Nocticula, my former lady in shadow, upheld her part of the bargain and decrypted Baphomet's notes. But instead of fulfilling the goal I set for myself, I decided to spend a little more time on research and preparation. It will take a year, I told Kaini back then, but after a year I needed two more, and then ten more years. The world was falling apart around me, and I still lingered. The storyteller frowns. Still, why are you taking so long to connect the planes? I... I don't know. My actions are unclear even to myself. I seem to have burned out. I look at people surviving on Galarian, and I realize I don't want to save them anymore. 
Who needs a handful of rabble who have already forgotten how to write? Who get to who get by with a vocabulary of 30 words? I haven't abandoned my idea. Oh no. I will see it through sooner or later. It is my life's work. I can't just abandon it. But not now. Why is Kiney against opening the portal now? The storyteller frowns. My friend thinks that it's too late. That my experience that my experiment in merging the planes will be dangerous for the entire universe. Who knows what consequences the merging will have on the plane I choose? What will happen if I merge Galarian with Heaven and Earthfall happens to it too? Before, when Galarian civilizations were still fighting, together we could have overcome surmounted Earthfall's consequences. But now there is no doubt that only war and death await us after we merge planes. Kani always supported you before. What changed? I have thought about it many times. Over the years he spent on Galarian, my friend gradually lost the fire in his eyes. His opinions became more and more careful. He stopped rushing into any adventure life offered him. The storyteller sighs. He got old. We both understand that his life as a half-elf is almost over, and I still have several hundred years to live. We realize that soon we must part forever. This thought keeps us from talking like we used to and making plans for the future. Kiney seems distant. The storyteller is silent for a long while subdued in his thoughts. The terrible thing is, I don't feel sad. I accept our parting as a given. I condemn myself for this, but can do nothing about it. Kiney will leave me, and I will drink a goblet of warmed wine to remember him. And then I will return to the laboratory to continue my research. My friend has become a stranger to me. Please continue. It happened. What I had been expecting for the last ten years. What I was ready for. Connie, my friend, took advantage of my hospitality and stole my research notes. They contained knowledge I gathered over the years from the most dis dangerous sources, and I have only partially deciphered them. Some of that knowledge will now be lost forever. He didn't even leave a goodbye note. He just left, never to return. I'm, st I'm standing at the top of the tower with a goblet in my hand. There is no anger, no sadness in my soul, just doomed emptiness and fatigue. I bring my lips to the wine but taste nothing. We go our separate ways from here, my former friend. I used to adore our friendship, looking for approval in your eyes. But now it has become a burden. It dried out, like a shriveled orange peel. I inhale deeply, filling my lungs, and toss the wine from, my go from the goblet. Entering the laboratory, I open a secret door and take out the real notes, not the skillfully crafted decoy I put for Kiney. I will finish my life's work and merge the planes, even if there is no longer any point. I can't do otherwise. The storyteller runs a tired hand over his face and tries to smile. I feel exhausted suddenly, like I'm feeling the entire weight of all the years I've lived. But this is not the end of my story. I know there are secrets in my past that we are yet to uncover. I mean, that's story about your friend's betrayal. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, that's just it. All right. Thank you for the stories. Thank you for helping me remember them. I have to go. 
wish you interesting adventures. So I never found all the notes of, of the storyteller. Hmm. Let's see. So yeah. Huh? Wool diff. Is there any chance, even a tiny one, that we can just uh, call this whole thing off now and go home? Wool diff is nervously biting his nails, and his tail is swishing from side to side, stirring up a cloud of dust. I'm sorry, it's clouds of dust. Before, I would have just made a run for it, but I can't do that now. Something's holding me back, and I really don't like the thought of leaving you high and dry. See what you turn me into? Have I turned you into a hero, maybe? Or have I finally made a real crusader out of you? <laughs> You've survived countless battles. Why are you scared now? <laughs> yeah, that one. survive but it'll all be totally different and I'm kind of used to it now to you and all this we're like friends I guess just try not to die I can't stand being sad so don't do that to me <laughs> everything will be fine and if it isn't well it was nice knowing you <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's a response I could give. <laughs> the other one is, I promise you'll have no cause to be sad or pull yourself together. Today could be, be the most important day of your life. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Everything will be fine. <laughs> and if it isn't, well, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> That reminds me, the Thieflings merchandise is still at your disposal. So don't be afraid to ask if you find yourself in need of something. <laughs> and talking to him really does open the shop. Huh. Stories told us by spirits, the night with Harold Hands, Cannabis Medium Alliance Publishing. The demon puts two plates on the table in front of me, on each a bleeding human heart. Look, he says, the right one belongs to a noble and righteous man, a loyal servant of Iomade. The left one is the heart of a murderer and a scoundrel, but something tells me they taste exactly the same. I remain silent and don't move. I couldn't if I tried. One of my hands is pinned to the wide armrest with a knife thrust to the hilt. The other similarly pinned helpless on the table. The demon circles and carefully brushes away a strand of hair that's stuck to my forehead. Your silence saddens me. Don't waste your time on this performance monster, I say. Though I have scarcely the energy to breathe, if you wish to torture me, go ahead. If you want to kill me, then kill me. My life is in your hands, but my soul is not, and never will be. The hearts on the plates in front of me continue oozing blood. They've only just been ripped out, ripped from their owner's bodies. The right one apparently belonged to my partner. The left to the criminal we were escorting. But the demon, who'd set his lair in the old mill, killed without discrimination. He walks around the armchair and stops behind my back, placing a clawed hand on my shoulder. This is not a, a performance at all. It's a feast. And I will be sated. No, not with this. He can see my eye still on the hearts. With you. It's your heart that's in front of me right now. So helpless. The claws on my shoulder tighten a bit. God has helped me endure. After a moment, the demon continues. You know what you don't understand? 
you zealous servants of law and good. He, he seems to like the sound of his own voice. It was you who brought us to your land. The more of you who gather here at the edge of the world room, so brave, burning with righteous wrath, the more like me will come from the abyss. It's not because we want to win a war and conquer your world. Perhaps our lords want this, but trust me, they are as far removed from their subjects as your lords and kings are from you. No, we come for those like you for the persistent and the proud, who won't break until the end, for those whose suffering is sweet and last and last for the sweets. He appears in front of me again, licking his lips. I will know that he'll never grant me a quick death. And this guy wrote this book. <laughs> Perhaps this is a work of fiction. <laughs> Alright, is there any weapon or armor I want? Alright, oh, uh, Galfrey's in my party now. What's she got? She ain't got squat. She's got headband. Oh, she's got plus five full plate armor. Belt of physical might plus four. Plus three ring of protection. Oh my god, this sucks. Oh, okay, here we go. A holy evil outsider bane longsword plus two. That's not bad. What is she? Plus four shield. I mean, I'm looking at her. I'm going to guess paladin. If she's not a paladin, they gave her bright white, like bright shining armor, a golden white shield, and a glowing, a glowing sword of holy energy. And she's not a paladin. I'm gonna raise some questions. So, but I didn't check yet. Let's see. I don't need to give her wands. Never roll up. What weapons we got? This thing, fire charge, hazard. There ain't nothing in the way of a. Uh... She's got a long sword. He's not selling long swords that are better than what she's got right now, anyway. What about armors? This armor gives a plus 14 bonus, so I just need an armor that does that. Plus 9. Tower shield. No, she can't wield the tower shield. Never mind. Let's see, breastplate. Has... Nope. All right. No, there's no other armor that comes close to what she's got right now. Or shield that they're selling. Let's see, decent ring. Hmm. Bracers, maybe? Bracers of balance. Plus five bra- Alright, plus five combat maneuver defense. And bonus. If the wearer is not prone, the wearer makes a fortitude saving throw. DC 23 on a successful save, the wearer is no longer prone. That can be useful. Acrobat's footwear. These boots allow the wearer to stand up without provoking attack of opportunity. It's not like I have anything else. Alright. I think that's it. Deal and let's go. Alright. Well, I can focus on equipping her later. Let's talk to everybody else. I'll just... Yep. Graybor. Not a bad spot to end this war. Formidable men 
menacing. It has a certain style about it. Taking an unhurried puff of his pipe, Graybor eyes the fortress with satisfaction. Seeing as our contract is coming to an end, Commander, let me just say that you are the most impressive client I've ever had the pleasure to work with. <laughs> and a highly lucrative pleasure it's been, too. You don't regret taking me up on my offer? Of course not. Where else would I have had so many adventures? Besides, it's thanks to you that I've been able to add so many accomplishments to my service record, which will boost my rates in the future. <laughs> you know, it's jobs like this, the ones that are both fun and pay well, that make me love what I do. Don't tell me you've crawled right into the maw of the abyss for the sake of gold. Well, it sure wasn't in the name of Iomade. <laughs> of course, money's not the be-all and end-all. You dimwits need someone with a clear head on your side. Someone to watch your back. I know how you hero types love sacrificing yourselves at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Graybor struggles to maintain his deadpan expression, but his mouth breaks into a smile despite his efforts. Like, 4 to 2, 20. Let me try whatever you did you've been smoking all this time. Success. There was never a chance of failure. A, pun a pungent but not wholly unpleasant aroma assaults your nostrils as your lungs fill with hot smoke. You bring the full force of your will to bear against the sudden urge to cough and smoothly hand back Graybor's prized possession. It's strong stuff from Garand. What do you think? Graybor accepts his pipe back from you, holding it like a priceless treasure. Not bad tobacco you've got there. Of course. It's worth its weight in gold. It's one of my little weaknesses that I refuse to give up. Craymore nods with satisfaction. Alright, time is money. We shouldn't squander it. Now you're talking. Why don't you show me who it is we need to kill to win this war? A Relu Vorla? I'll wish that lady sweet dreams with unalloyed pleasure. <laughs> Talk to Ember. This is it. The last fortress. It's been a long road from the river city to here. We walked and walked and walked along the road. And suddenly, there's no more road. Are you ready for battle? Truth? Lies? What are you talking about? Nobody knows what will happen next. People are afraid of the future, so that's why they make it up. They lie to themselves so it's not so scary. They convince themselves and others of the things they make up. But one day the future will come. The story ends, for better or worse. When everything's already happened, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. And there's no reason to lie. Hmm. What are you going to do when the war is over? Let's go. It's time to fight. The crow looks at you with its clever black eyes and calls loudly. Oof. Alright, Camellia. So this is it then. The final push. The last battle where the great heroes will vanquish Arilu Vorlesh and close the world wound, ridding Galarian of a deadly threat. That is how the crime 
Chronicles will tell it, I'm sure. You know very well, my friend, that this was never my war. I was merely following the person who offered me protection. I could not have cared less where you led me. And I still do not care about the cause for which we are fighting. I probably ought to have cast you off, rather than lay my head on the chopping block alongside yours. <laughs> but I've grown attached to you now. I don't like the idea of you perishing in this place. That is why I shall help you win. Thank you for your honesty, Camellia. Don't thank me. Not here, not now. I simply felt that I ought to tell you the truth. Nothing more. It seems I have grown overly sentimental after all our travels. Now is not the time for doubts. Together we will win. Rush headlong into battle, come what may. I approve of this plan. Camellia hides a smile behind her hand. Not fair. Ninia. I am calculating the likelihood of your victory. Taking into consideration the fortifications of Threshold, the long period it has been under demon control, and Aurelia Vorlesh, who is personally overseeing the defense, I would give the Crusaders a 30% chance of success at most. <laughs> With brows furrowed, Ninio is feverishly writing something on a crumpled piece of paper. She looks up at you and sighs. Of course, the presence of an illustrious scholar of Galarian in your ranks, meaning me, immediately increases your chances by 5%. Are you afraid? Fear is an unproductive emotion that typically gets in the way of a good experiment. <laughs> And I've never indicated that I do not support my loyal follower in his battle against the demons. I simply calculated your chances of success. Whatever our chances, we're not backing down. If you win, I'll make sure to mention you in my encyclopedia. Aha! Uh -huh. With that as an incentive, your chances have increased by 5%. Consider this my contribution to your victory. <laughs> Ninio scratches her nose with pencil. It makes. Thanks for that. Okay, what is this? The artifact created by years of hard work of the servants of Pelora and the efforts of the finest spellcasters of the crusade glows with a mysterious light. The starlit astro astrolabe seems to be looking forward to the hour when it can release its power. And unleash it on the demons. The stargazers of the Shrine of Pelora shared their knowledge with the commander. For many years, they have been working on an artifact that could weaken the connection between Threshold and the Abyss by shining Pelora's northern lights down upon the fortress. Let's see, I could leave and say I don't need Pelora's help or awaken the artifact. It's time to clear the sky over Threshold. I'm gonna do that. I didn't spend all this time getting the goddamn thing made when I could have been ref I could have made like four relics in the time I spent getting this thing made. So it's incredibly redundant to say no, I'm good after all that. Unleash your dog. All right, before I speak with anyone else, I'm going to take a long rest. Let's see. This place has been sanctified. It can protect the area around the question of the abyss. Yeah, yeah, I need to catch my breath. All right. What spell can I make? I guess it doesn't really matter. What monster mass? Cast these meteors Go. Begin rest. That should be it. Ah, oh, there's the Power Rangers. Come on, let's see. 
Hmm. Who's attacking? I don't know. Is it Lord Zed? No. Rita Repulsa? No. All right, well, I'm running she out. She became a good person. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Um, let me see. How many Power Ranger villains do I know about? <laughs> Is it around. is it Scorpio? I think that was one of their names. Uh, is it Scorpio? Is Scorpio attacking? She's been so low. Okay, well, come on, tell us who's attacking. Is it Goldar? <laughs> he wasn't even a main boss. Hold on. No, he, been, he gets resurrected. He's a resurrected creature. So. Yeah, my my knowledge is sorely lacking of Power Ranger villains. Yeah, but like. Mainly of like the villains that were the ones that kept calling in the the, the monsters to attack. Worse, it's I don't worse. know their names. We created our own monsters. Yeah, I don't know any of their names. So help yeah. me out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You, you got them constantly calling calling you for help. Come on. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Turn the damn phone off then. <laughs> yeah. We need to talk to you. Nope. Nah, whatever. Alright, so yeah, she's a paladin. She's level 15. So I guess they gave... They wanted to give some room to level her up. And for whatever reason, the game gives her the persuasive feat. And then... Smite evil, of course. And then Aura of Righteousness, which all paladins get. And Heavy Armor Focus, which is fine. And then next, she gets... Mercy you against poisons. That's fine. And shield focus. Okay. She didn't have shield focus before. Okay. Do you know if there are evil then, rangers out there? Level 20. Are you one of the evil rangers? Is that what you just tried to hit, allude to? M you must be. You're, you, you're, put, you're letting your ringer go off the way of the stream. <laughs> We're lucky I'm not popular and no one really gives a shit about me having high quality streams. When you're low tier, no one expects much. So I can't, so I, it's hard to be left disappointed when you have no expectations coming in. Alright, and then she's leveled up Holy Champion. Alright. That's it. I'm shocked that everybody still watches Power Rangers. I'm shocked there's people who still watch my channel. <laughs> Why not? You're you're youthful. Hey, no, don't dox me, man. People don't know my age. I'm a, I'm an old man. <laughs> you don't know me. Don't don't go. Have, don't don't. Please don't dox me. Don't kill me. <laughs> Shit. It's terrible. Yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a young whippersnapper. No, no, that's the reverse. That, that, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a young whippersnapper. That, that's the one. Jesus, what are you doing? <laughs> You're so in your acting way. Yeah, I don't, I don't have. I'm not good at acting. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Give her the scarlet. Oh, what is this? Good hope. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she's got a morale bonus on spell attacks. And yeah, this is fine. What else we got? Um, bracers of balance, sure. Because I have gloves of dueling, but paladins don't get weapon training, so that's useless. You see a paladin? Yeah, she's a paladin. Level, straight paladin, level 20. I got another belt of physical perfection, so I guess I can just hand it to her. Here we go. It just replaces what she had before. The belt she had before only gave like a bonus to one stat. This gives a bonus to three. Alright. You could give her a new helmet, but the current one she gives she has right now gives a plus six to charisma. So, we'll leave her with that. And then I gotta choose... I chose a cloak already. I guess choose a ring. What do we got? Ring of protection plus four. Increase that. What else we got? Guiding... The guiding star. 
Ring of Guiding Star. Plus four initiative. Mm -hmm. Whenever the wearer lands a hit against an undamaged enemy, grants all companions a plus three on damage rolls for one round. Yep. Go for it. Let's see. Sar Sarzakis Paza. Immunity to necromancy school spells while in demonic rage. Oh, wonderful. When the paladin's in a demonic rage, she's fine. Good, good. Awesome. What a kick in the neck. Let's see. Right. Then the Hendrian League Collar, plus four natural armor. In addition, it grants a plus four morale bonus on reflex saves and fort saves, but a minus four on will saves. It's probably not a good idea. You can just give her this natural armor plus six. There. What else we got? She can have these boots. So if she ever is knocked down, she can get up, no problem. And what else? Passion Sweet Poison. Whenever the wearer of these gloves confirms a critical hit with any bow, enemy starts losing an amount. Right, I should have given this to Windwog or Arushale. What do they have? Surefire Gloves. Whenever the wearer lands a hit with a ranged weapon on the enemy within 30 feet, it deals additional 1d6 damage and applies bleed for 1d3 rounds. I can see why I left that on her. Alright, next we have Dashing Cavalier's Gloves. Plus one morale bonus on attack rolls. In addition, a plus two bonus on damage rolls while mounted. Yeah, nope. Guess give her this. Is she mounted? Yeah, no. I I just gave her the um gloves for the unmounted ability. Oh. All right. So that out the way. Um, back to equip equipping Galfrey. What do we give her? Doesn't gain anything from gloves of dueling, bracelets of archery is useless. Dashing cavalier gloves is also useless on her. What is she gonna give her a horse? No, she has a uh, divine weapon bond, so no good. Let's see, gloves of endurance, the wizard. Jaws of the Jackal only helps if you summon. Oh, it only helps if you summon evil creatures, too. So I really can. The only one who would benefit from that is Daren. Yeah, I guess I'll give him these. Jaws of the Jackal. Go for it. He can cast summon monster. And moving back to... Princess... Claws of a Sacred Beast. She's not going to attack with her bare hands, so that's no good. I guess there's no gloves for her. You huh. give her no, gloves? the Dashing Cavalier gloves still gives a morale bonus to attack rolls. It's just, I'm going to be casting Good Hope, so that's kind of useless. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's it. What about armor? Assertion of dominance. A plus five shield compared to her plus four shield. So it's already good. This plus five shield grants its wielder immunity to slashing and piercing while the wielder is at full health. Why not? Go for it. Assert dominance. <laughs> my queen. <laughs> Why not? What else we got? Um, Robe of Air. She doesn't cast that spell. Rest of... Death Rays. Uh, my Hag's Demise. 
This cloth grants the wearer a plus four insight bonus on saving throws against hexes and necromancy school spells. Sure. Why not? There. We're all done. If there's anything else I can equip her with, I completely forgot. I guess look at the weapons available. Oh, shit. I almost forgot. Let's have some dialogue with Finian. Let's go for a chimlat. Huh? No? Yeah, no. He, he's got nothing new. I thought he, of all people, would have something new to say. Yeah. But nope. They didn't think to give Finian any new dialogue. A wasted opportunity. Everybody else has... Uh, oh, did like, you give Damon? No, I didn't go to Damon yet. Hold on, I gotta still cast a spell on myself. Um, type. Where, where is it? Heal... Restoration, greater restoration, use. All right. So, I could use this, sir. The help of a cleric. Need to buy up some more scrolls of greater restoration, if the if she has any. Uh oh. Restoration. I could use some res restoration scrolls. Scroll of cleanse, no. Diamonds, not what I'm after. Oh, scrolls of resurrection, could always use some of those. Uh, let's see. Command ring. No need. Cape of Pest Control. Corn of Protection. Hmm. Is that... Is that it? No, no, there's more scrolls down here. Okay. Can't find it. That's a problem. What now? I was hoping they had some scrolls of greater restoration. Because, you know, gonna need it. Okay, let's try this from the top. Scroll of Restoration Lesser. I need another Scroll of Restoration. There's the basic ones. Now I need Scroll of Restoration Greater. Ah. Oh, man, she doesn't have any more. That's pretty bad. Well, whatever the final party is, it's definitely going to have to include Darren now.
Okay. Okay, so now I have meticulously combed through the entirety of all the scrolls she is selling. She does indeed have absolutely none. No, no greater restorations. Okay, anybody that can free you? Yeah, if I took enough long rests. <laughs> oh wait, no, I don't because the ca the casters who can cast greater restoration don't have scribe scrolls. So no, I don't. Yeah, but you can talk to any. Um, doesn't that cleric actually have that ability? No, he doesn't. Remember, I used the recommended build for everybody from start to finish this playthrough. Nothing customized, so the only thing everybody no, I'm has. about the NPCs. Yeah, no, the NPCs can't be asked to craft squat, unfortunately. You're thinking of Pathfinder Kingmaker when every once in a while one of the, uh, a certain NPC would come up to you and ask, you, Do you need something? Right idea. No, right, too. right franchise. Nope, they don't. If they do, not with any of the mythic paths that I've chosen. Not with Az Azada, don't. Whoever has to search up, any person there that has a temple, you should be able to do it. Well, apparently not. So, you, I guess you, you, someone lied to you. Go to the temple. Harry did. Like the only or the only altar that they made. So no good. Alright, now. Let's go talk to uh, this guy. There it is. The citadel of the demon army. You know I expected it to be formidable and fearsome. Something that would make me quake in terror. But now that I am standing at its gates, I'm surprised at how little fear I feel. <laughs> Do not mistake this for bravado. Our enemies are dangerous, but no more than that. We have traveled to the heart of the abyss and back again. Now we are home on our own territory. This time, let it be the invaders who quake in terror. I regret that my brother is not here with us. Who knows what became of him? He vanished without a trace like thousands of other victims of this war. There's only this to your commander. So that no more people have to suffer the same fate. Yeah, it ain't my fault. I didn't cause the war wound or none of that. That's not my fault. You, you're, you're delusional. <laughs> Sister, his brother was a monster, just like him. <laughs> no, I'm a dragon. See, I'm an you're a monster. I'm you're a, in the boss of I am literally an embodiment of what is good. <laughs> so no, I'm the good guy. <laughs> you're the monster. No matter what, no matter how much good I do, I'm always going to be the monster in someone's story. I see you how are. it is. Uh huh. Could save the world from an entire demonic invasion. This is a monster. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, wow. There's no winning. Yeah. There's no. There's no winning. He's Satan, people. Yo, it's like being. It's like it's like how Spider-Man feels in the '90s comics. Yeah. Like in the '90s cartoon. No matter how, what you do, everyone safe. just wants to see the you as the horrible monster. What way to go? All right, moving on. What are you going to do after we win? I will go home to Endor. I will lay down my weapon and never pick up another so long as I live. <laughs> Save a knife for cutting grapevines. I will serve the goddess in our old temple. And when the peasant children come to pepper me with questions about the crusade. I will do my utmost to make sure that my stories give none the idea that there is anything beautiful or romantic about war. You've changed so much since we first met. I had to. If I had a choice, I probably would have stayed the same naive little boy I was before the war. The boy who had never killed, who had never been to the abyss. Who had never buried those with whom he had sat around a campfire only the night before. <sighs> Even so, when I set out to join this war, my head was full of so many romantic notions. More than usual for a naive little boy. 
but life found a way to shatter those most thoroughly. Hmm. I'm sure your brother would be proud of you. Pride is known as a mortal sin for good reason. It was pride that propelled my brother to join the crusade in search of glory. And look how that ended. No, I am not here to make anyone proud. I only want one thing. For this nightmare, after 100 long years, to finally be over. Are you ready, then, to battle? Ready. Let us drive the demons all the way back to the Abyss! Two more takes it. Let us drive... Oh, yeah, he just... What's the... Piece of sentiment. Lon, Windowog, Arushale, Tzila. under control and now we're standing on the cusp of our last battle threshold <laughs> this isn't how i imagined it i thought i'd be running happily toward death and trying to do something particularly heroic so i could go out in style but now i'm thinking about how we have to win and go back to dresden because there's so much work still to do there We're definitely not going to die. I have a good feeling about this. Or you really don't care about being a hero anymore. And the last one is maybe we should say our goodbyes now in case one of us doesn't come back. <laughs> ah, let's see. We're definitely not going to die. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> The Crusades were always doomed to fail. We've been going easy on these demons for too long, don't you think? It's time to show them one last time what Galarians are capable of. That's a spirit. Alright, when do I? So, this is where it all ends. When I first crossed paths with you in Home. I never thought I'd end up in the very heart of the world wound. You certainly know how to enjoy yourself. Whistling a jaunty tune, Windwalk stares dead ahead, her eyes cold and clear. I suppose now is the time to thank you for that. After everything we've gone through together, it's strange to think that I once planned to spend my whole life in those horrible catacombs under Cranabras. I know this won't sound much in the spirit of the crusade, but betraying Hosilla was the best decision of my life. Have you already decided what you'll do after we win? It's time. Let's show them what the underground crusaders are made of. Our years of exile have given us quite the score to settle. And today, the demons will pay for everything. Right. Arushale. It means my freedom, 
has been bought with thousands of innocent lives. But I will do everything in my power to help you close this abomination, so that no one else has to die. You defeated the abyss within yourself. After such a feat, routing its armies will be a breeze. I did not do it alone. <laughs> you have led your army to victory, and me to my dream. Now you're shouldering the guilt for all the victims of the invasion? Isn't that too much for one Arushale to handle? <laughs> it's not about guilt. It's just that I am ashamed to take any joy in my freedom, knowing that this terrible war was the cause of it. Everyone would have been better off if the world wound had never been opened. But then I would have remained a monster. Perhaps one day I will atone for all the evil I did. But it took a far greater evil to make my redemption even possible. What are you going to do after we win? A wistful smile plays on her lips. All right. Are you ready? Then to battle. I am ready. Let the abyss tremble in fear. And seal. Hey. Well, are we going to stick it to the demons one last time? No. 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 Have you thought about what you're going to do after we win? You're a true friend, Sila. It's been an honor fighting shoulder to shoulder with you. Back at you, friend. So, are we going to crush some demons? It's time to show them the door once and for all. Sila squeezes your shoulder for a moment. She also calls you by name if it wasn't for the fact that dialogue <laughs> doesn't help it. Alright, that's... That's everything. That's everyone. Let's go. Oh wait, no, that's not everyone. Where the hell's Darren? I don't want to be here. Oh, there he is. At last, this irksome crusade is drawing to a close. Darren's smile reveals nothing beyond his usual genteel... In so yet, oh, hold on. We, we we made it. You thought we weren't going to find it, but we found it. We found one. Insouciance. Insouciance. Okay. Casual lack of concern. Indifference. It couldn't just say that. No, the game had to be real fucking cultured by using that word. Alright. So his usual genteel insouciance. I see you're not afraid of the fight ahead. It's only a battle against the worst horrors of the world wound, after all. Perhaps I should reconsider. No. Others can be afraid. But I know who our leader is and what he is capable of. 
capable of. I have never seen you fail to rise to a challenge, no matter how impossible. So leave me and my optimism be. We will win. If anyone should be afraid, it is the wretches inside Threshold. Well then, onward to victory. And to the victory feast, I trust. Get a horn. <laughs> Leaves a victory bash to me. Right, that now that's everyone. Yep. Let's go. At the gates of Threshold, the darkness is dense and vicious, like a brew in a cauldron. The darkness seems to devour all light pouring fr it in from outside. But the danger lies not only within. The companions you don't take into the final battle will remain here to guard the approach to Threshold, and they must be ready to fight as well. Good requires a dynamic path. Don't have it. Look into the darkness. For a moment, you think you can see blurred silhouettes inside, but then you realize that it was just your eyes playing tricks on you. Whatever is lurking in this darkness, it now lies low waiting, waiting for you. Enter the fortress. All right. Who do I take out and who do I put in? Ember, the queen. Arushale. Okay. And Darren. <laughs> Just because he doesn't want to be there. Ember, the queen, Arushale, and Darren. Okay, so we're kicking you out. Putting you in. Let's do this. Alright, let's see. Mm, it's got a little tornadoes in here. Okay. Hmm. Noticula. You hear the sound of laughter and the, then the lady in shadow begins to speak. Incredible. You rejected my counsel and foolishly dismissed the power I offered. You put my plans in jeopardy, and yet you've managed to succeed. Despite your flaws and foolish decisions, you are so close to victory. My victory. Stop playing games. I do not belong to you, and neither will my victory. Sure, whatever makes you feel better about yourself. What do you want from me? Do not be afraid, I mean you no harm. You refuse to listen to me, but I still want you to succeed. Your victory is in my best interest. I am simply here to wish you good luck. Do you know what lies ahead? Better than anyone, and yet not well enough. You are about to confront the most lethal, powerful, and capable servant I've ever had. She is unmatched in her abilities, but you are her creation, her masterpiece. You are the only one who stands a chance of stopping her. The creation must surpass the creator. If you truly desire victory, why don't you join the battle yourself? Why? You are doing perfectly well on your own. Everything is going exactly as I had hoped. I have to go. Stay a moment longer. 
There's a small matter that I wish to address. I want to reward you for your loyalty. After all, you have accepted my profane gift. You have chosen to serve me. Therefore I will bestow upon you a token of my favor. The world will know that you are my champion. I hereby crown you with this wreath that I have woven from the darkest, most insidious shadows of the abyss. Wear it with pride, my champion. Am I forced to? Renders Barrett, uh, symbol of Iomade. See, did they replace my equipment now? No. All right. So, yes, yeah, they give me something. Darkness caress. This headband of per of perfection plus eight Ooh. allows its wearer to add their charisma bonus to all damage dealt by ranged weapons. Huh. That doesn't do squat for me. But you can give it to someone else. I guess. Uh, give it to Arusha, eh? Yeah, she doesn't actually have any headgear anyway. Yeah, put this on. Go get him. <laughs> I guess I can give her something else. Because now that... The belt of perfection doesn't do anything. The life veil. The life veil amulet actually still does give, like, the ability to cast cure wounds twice a day, so that's still neat. Hmm. Is there any other belt to put on her? Hmm. Belt of giant strength. What other belt is there? Mangling Frenzy only well, helps with rage. I guess I'll give her the belt of the venerated champion. And let's see, the amulet doesn't. Is there any better amulet I could give? Probably not. All right, but more than anything else, I forgot that, um... Buff? No, not that. Um... Galfrey is now gaining the mythic powers, but I have yet to level up any of that. Leading Strike... Toughness... Mythic... Always a chance... Weapon Focus Mythic, Longsword... Last Stand, Improved Critical Mythic, Abundant Smite, Dazzling Display Mythic, Unstoppable, yeah. Alright, let's see what happens now. Desolating, yeah. desolating Galu Stormcaller. Gotta change the lineup here. There. I'm up first. We've got Malignant, Succubus, Deadeye, Horrid, Locust, Swarm, and Desolating, Galu, Stormcaller. Breathe.
Hmm. Just run up for melee attacks. Queen Galfrey. Uh, charge in. Miss. Rushele. Just attack till he's dead. I will resist. Or miss. 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 And miss. Ah, crap. From the coal. And firestorm. And stormburst. Oh my god. Attack the swan. All right. Ember cast firestorm. All right. The swarm that was on top of her is dead. Now we just have to deal with everything else. Starting with the succubus. Let's see, what else we got? Heal. Heal mass. That's it. Now let's just bombard him. Ah. Or not. Nothing but misses. Attack the second base. Tempest killed Ember. Okay. The tsunami's really screwing everyone up.
I realized why I screwed up then. Turn base? No, it's not that. I forgot to set any of the... Any of Galfrey's spells. Mm. Yeah, man. Yep, she has up to fourth level spells, and not a single spell slot. Alright, gonna cast a Vale of Heaven. of law. Holy whispers. Let's see. Greater magic weapon. No, no. Archon's aura. Shield of Dawn, Eagle Soul, Sailor's Edge, Resounding Blow. As for you, second cast of this. See, you also are supposed to have spells to cast. Alright, that's it. Okay. Alright, well, be everything as it may. I am going to have to call it for tonight. Thanks to everyone who stopped by for this little playthrough of Pathfinder Wrath the Righteous. I will be on later today with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. And then tomorrow morning with Pathfinder Kingmaker. And until then, take care.